Welcome to episode 13 of Under the Cardboard Box Podcast. We're your host, Arnaldo Castillo, and next to me is Heidel Martinez. Man, how, you guys are probably wondering what that was in the beginning. Yeah, so I was checking the email uh, over the weekend, and I see one of our faithful followers uh, on Facebook, uh, which you can... Uh, definitely follow us on Facebook and Twitter <laughs> uh, under the cardboard box. But uh, Stephen, Stephen Snowden, he sent in his, uh, I guess, intro idea that he had. When I when I heard it, I was blown away. I literally, at first, I thought it was Ocelot speaking. Yeah, I thought yeah. it was Ocelot speaking. Like he got like a like a like a sound bit or something. Right, right. And then and then I hear under the cardboard box podcast. My mind was blown. Stephen, dude. That was amazing, man. You did you, a very, you did a great job. Yeah. Um, I was blown away when Heidel sent it to me. I did not yeah. know what to think about it at first mm-hmm. until he said, "You must be under, under the, the cardboard, cardboard box. box." Yeah, <laughs> and that um, <laughs> <laughs> that was a great addition to put in the end. You yeah. did. I I gotta give it to you guys. We we just want to tell you, you gotta check him out. Um, yeah. he has his um his own podcast called. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong in saying this. It's called Schlock Shock Radio's podcast. Yep. Um, Schlock Schlock <laughs> Schlock Shock Radio That's podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that there you go. And he also has his own website. Uh, it's called Legless Corpse. Uh, dot us. Uh, slash forward slash shock. Uh, well, Schlock dash Shock Radio forward slash. Uh, where he does amazing work narrating stories, mystery stories, horror stories. He does a, a lot of voices, and he does a very good job at it, guys. So share, you know, show him some love. We will definitely be uh, checking out a lot more of his work. Yeah. But we are impressed. Yes, that We're was impressed. that was amazing. Uh, it, it's it shows just how dedicated you you fans are. Um, you know, and we'll we'll get more to our fans uh, later in the show but uh just you know honestly from the bottom of my heart like thank you so much you know it shows us that we are appreciated somewhere out there yeah. you know and that honestly you know sure we could be on this uh podcast you know talking about metal gear and stuff but really the real voices are you guys out there you uh, are ucbp exactly you guys you we are we're just a small part yeah we're not even and we don't want this to discourage you guys from sending in your intros yeah of course you know send in we, your intros yeah send in your intros uh, comment, rate, subscribe to us at Under the Cardboard Box. Uh, write into us at Under the Cardboard Box at gmail.com. Yep. You know, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. You guys matter. Yeah, absolutely. You, you guys matter. So it's been a crazy, awesome week. Yes. It's, uh, I'm going to take it back to November. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, November, we mentioned that, uh, Konami, they liked one of our tweets. So, as for us, you know, we don't get none of retweets or none of that. So when a big corporation company likes one of your tweets, you go nuts. Yeah. You know, you're like, yeah, yeah, whoa, yeah. this is a big deal. I know there's a lot of things going on with uh, Konami and Kojima and stuff like that, you know. But like I said in that podcast, not everyone in Konami is bad, right? Right. So take it back to last week. Okay, so this is great news and we want to say this. We want to, first off, we want to thank the people at Konami for this, but I was working on Twitter. I'm usually the one behind the, the you know, the social media trying to post things up, um, and something interesting happened. You know, I was looking through the notifications, and Konami, the company behind Metal Gear Solid, multi-million dollar company is now following us on Twitter. What? I know. I know. Um, I told Heidel, and he was just... I was blown away. He was in disbelief. Yeah, I was. I remember I was at work, and like it's so, so many things were happening at the same time, just a bunch of stuff where it was happening, and then he told me, we did it. They followed us on Facebook. First, we got retweeted by them. Twitter. Tw- uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, Twitter. <laughs> and first, we got retweeted by them on Twitter, and then... We got followed them. We got followed by them on Twitter. I was like, "Wait, wait, what did you just say?" And he's like, "We did it, bro." I was like, "This is this is nuts. This is like beyond me." Yeah, beyond. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, beyond. <laughs> beyond. Um, 
we we're we're beyond grateful. We're such a small we're such a small voice in such a great world. But we want to be the voice of Metal Gear. We yeah. want to go yeah. we want to be the go to source for Metal Gear. And of course, um that is without being said that we will also support all the other places that are like Metal Gear Informer where we constantly get yep, our news. Yep, yep. Um we we love you guys for that. Uh, and and you're a great source. We will never not source you. I I promise. <laughs> yeah. Um. But thank you, Konami. We want to say it right here out loud. Maybe we might not agree with everything you do. We will always be honest about about our opinions. We we won't be bought out. Uh, I mean, unless you want to add some extra zeros to that check. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. But we will always strive to bring you guys our the best of the Metal Gear news and our most honest of honest opinions about it without pulling punches. Uh, But that, that being said, we're so grateful. Heidel, how are you? I'm great. I mean, in the world of under the cardboard box and just a small amount of stuff that we've created already within uh, 12 episodes and our 13th one this time, uh, it's been such a fantastic journey even though it's only been like less than a few months, uh, I I like that we are gaining traction. There's a momentum happening. Yeah. There's definitely a momentum where we're shifting towards um, people kind of just saying like, oh, Metal Gear this, uh, you know, maybe this is the last one, that's it, Kojima's out and stuff. Maybe this could be the start of something good. Yeah. Uh, I'm. We're definitely not in, in charge of that, of course not, but we want to be the voice of Metal Gear just so that you guys can be heard. Uh, we get a bunch of emails. Um, you know, we got some Twitter followers and they were talking to us through Twitter and Facebook and stuff. And, uh, excuse me, you know, we had so much going on and they're telling us their stories and everything. You know, we want to let that out to the world because Metal Gear is such a huge world and such a great uh, video game series. Uh, probably one of the best, in my opinion, obviously the best, but... Uh, it's so much to be said, and there's so much beyond that that goes to say when we're talking about things like an intro being uh, made for us, or just someone telling us about their experience in the Phantom Pain, or last week uh, where we talked about Ghost Babble and the non-canon games. So much stuff to be said. Uh, I'm so grateful, so happy for the fans and all the stuff that's been happening. Soon, we want more stuff to come out. Uh, we're constantly talking about different things that we can incorporate and how we can change things or how we can add to things or take things away. Uh, we want to definitely hear from you guys. You guys will definitely have a say in uh, you know what we do. Um, we're always listening. We're always looking at our social media content. You know, Arnaldo always tells me what's going on. So it's it's good to hear that the fans are listening and the fans are actually uh, tuning in every week. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we had a few <clears throat> Twitter followers saying, you know, we love you guys and thank you for, uh, su- uh, you know, putting up the podcast and stuff. And thank you for supporting us. Yeah, we, we want to thank you guys for just tuning in every Tuesday to listen to us two. Yeah. You know, yeah, that that is I, that's a bit overwhelming just because, man, the numbers don't lie. They don't. They don't lie. And don't. so we are so grateful to you. Yeah. Um. You know, we've also we as Heidel was saying, we want to bring out more content. We want to, um, we want we want more Metal Gear stuff out. It's just a bit difficult. That's why we have now opened up a Patreon. Yeah. So I guess this could be our our uh, segue into our Patreon. We just launched a Patreon, so you could go to patreon.com forward slash under the cardboard box and you could pledge. Uh, the first pledge is a dollar. So if yep. If you have a dollar to spare dollar every a month, month. <laughs> uh, you can get these episodes earlier. You get it one day earlier on Mondays. And for our video content, uh, if you pledge five dollars, you get our video content every Thursday. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we, we, we just want to make more things. Uh, obviously, you know, financials are a huge thing, obviously, in this world and stuff. And we just want to bring a lot more stuff out, a lot more stuff out. We have so, so many good ideas uh things we want to do things we already have working in the process that uh you know we can't say much yet um but 
there's things that we definitely want to get to the world and and to you guys so you guys can get better metal gear content and just a lot more news you know we're we're in contacts now with konami uh which is something great that we, we will be talking to them yeah. from time to time at least trying we know they're a busy corporation <laughs> yeah for but sure we're, we're definitely going to try to keep in contact with them yep. um trying to see what what they're they're up to maybe get some spicy news beforehand yeah um yeah so and we want to bring that to you first first um as far as as far as I'm doing, um, yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm doing, I'm just so uh, I'm so glad to see how we're growing. I really am. Yeah. I I've been working on this all week. Heido and I have been working all week to try to raise um, the bar and try to get more uh, more news out there. Um, and and you guys have been doing your share. I know you guys have probably been telling people, "Hey, listen to this podcast." And man, that that is. That is a dream, um, and I don't mean snake eater. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we we appreciate that we a lot. Really, we really do appreciate it. So it, it's you guys are making a dream come true. Yeah, uh, we are we are trying to make an actual mother base for Metal Gear. So keep Fultoning people, um, get them to join our ranks. You know, have them follow us, have them post things, and and you know what, we will be thanking you along the way. I think I think we're up to what fifty two hundred subscribers now. Yep, on iTunes, man, that is beyond amazing. We never thought that we would make it to this to this point. Yeah, we started this as something we can do with as our spare a, time, as like a hobby. As yeah, like a, you know, just yeah. something. Eh, is it really gonna take off? Is it really gonna become popular? We don't. We didn't think so. We never thought so. And it just hit us like a bag of potatoes. It, do people still use that term? I don't know, man. No? Do they? I don't know. No. But <laughs> um, <laughs> I digress. Bef- <clears throat> Before we get into the news, I just want to wanna talk about something that happened not too long ago. <laughs> oh, yes. As we were setting up. As we were setting up. As we were setting up the studio, this, 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 this table here, everything, the mics, whatever you're mm. looking at. Mm. Or, this table. Or, <laughs> this table right here. Um, we, we, I was talking to Heidel about some phone scammers that yeah. try to reach out to you. They tell you they're from windows or they're from, I don't a, know if you've ever gotten that, but yeah, uh, uh, you guys, but it happens all the time. Well, he was telling me, look, check this video out. Check this video out of these guys that would mess with them. Like they would, they know that they're scammers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then they just start messing with them. So I and I told them, I'm like, oh, yeah, I got that all the time. I got that like last week and et cetera, et cetera. And then we started watching the videos literally while we were watching the videos. You won't believe this. You can't believe this, but you will because you'll listen to it at the end of the episode. Oh, you, uh, OK, go ahead. I was uh, going to announce it. Hey, that's fine. I can just edit this out. <laughs> you will not. OK. Um. <laughs> um, so as soon as we. Uh, we're looking at the videos, right? And uh, we're laughing and stuff. I get a phone call. Random phone call. And the guy goes, hello, uh, I'm calling from et cetera, et cetera. Something business bureau, credit card. Something, something business something. bureau. Something. And he, and Heidel looks at me. And then he's like, like, I think this is it. This is it. This is it. <laughs> and I kid you not. It was. It was. It he was. was. He was. He was. Call, he was calling from a like a credit. You. I don't know something I don't about know, something about big gi- loans. Giving a loan to, to big businesses yeah, or small businesses like, or whatever. I don't know. I don't know. Either Doesn't way. matter. <laughs> so, as Heidel said, we will actually put the clip of me talking. To, Heidel spoke to him first. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess I didn't have the idea to record it on the mic, or he didn't. But when he passed us on, when, when Heidel gave him all the information, he said his name was John, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera yeah. yeah, yeah. He just used John because right? I was yeah, like, tell yeah, him you're yeah. John Cena. And he was just <laughs> like, my name's John. Yeah. And he stuck with that. He passed him on to his um, advanced uh, senior manager, senior something. manager, yeah. whatever. But when he passed him, he passed the phone to me. Yeah. Yeah. And so he said, hello, John. I'm like, <laughs> who's John? Yeah. Who's Who's John? Who's John? So that's the. I think that's the beginning of it, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, the, that's beginning the beginning of, of the recording. So and and then it just goes on and on, and it. I'm not gonna spoil anything. Listen to the yeah, end of just the episode. T- tune in to the end of the uh, episode right after the outro, and you guys would just have a ball with and this. And let it's us know 
what you think of that. Yeah. And let us know if you get it too, you know? <laughs> yeah. This is a public service announcement. <laughs> yeah. To make you watch out for these people. Yeah. Just watch but out for these. But if you get it, mess with them. Mess with them. Seriously. It is hilarious. They hate it. He doesn't, he didn't even know how to respond most of the time. Yeah. Yeah. He was, I, he was just lost. I mean, just check it out. Yeah. Check yeah. It don't spoil anything yeah, for yeah, me. I was going to say, but no, no, just check but it out. But you know what? Straight to the news. Let's go. We got some things to talk about. I think you'll be happy to hear it. All right. So this news is brought to you by Game Metal Gear Informer is where we get all our news from. It's our news source. Um, I constantly check it all the time, you know, Twitter and sometimes in the website. But uh, if you guys want to read the news or read our, if you're more like reading into articles and stuff, then uh, you can go into Metal Gear Informer. So Kojima. He launched his new YouTube channel, which is called Hideo Tube. <laughs> uh, so very subtle, very subtle. Very, very subtle. Uh, so his first episode just came out, and it shares his top 10 movies of 2015. So I'm going to go down the list. Uh, but before I read you the list, have you read this or no? I've actually seen the episode. You've seen the episode? I've seen the episode. Oh, okay. So do you remember who was number one? I, I don't remember. I, I know he mentioned 007. Okay. But I don't remember which one was number one on. So. All right. Well, guess guess which one was number one. Uh, I don't know. Uh, um, Deadpool? All right. That came out in 2016. Yeah. Yep. Well, you know, now you now I'm exposed. That's it. You guys know I don't watch movies. <laughs> <laughs> Deadpool was awesome, though. It was really good. All right. So the 10th one is Star Wars The Force Awakens was his 10th favorite movie of 2015, which is pretty weird because uh, I would think it would be probably in... Top in, five. Yeah, for sure. Next one is Fires on the Plane. Never heard of it. Next is Straight Outta Compton. Amazing movie. Very, very good movie. Next one is The Intern. The Intern, I've, I've heard of that. It's yeah. um, with Robert De Niro and Anna Hathaway. Never seen it, though. Cool. Okay. Uh, Sean the Sheep, the movie. That's number six. Sean the Sheep. All right. All right. <laughs> Five is Nightcrawler. Okay. Cool. Four is Lock. Perfect. Right. right, right. <laughs> Third is Kingsman, the Secret Service. I actually want to see that movie. Yeah? I haven't seen it yet at all. Hmm. So. Okay. Second is Whiplash. I think Whiplash is a musical movie. I'm not sure. It's like, uh, I think I've seen it before. Let me see. Huh. We are currently Googling. We're, huh. Whiplash. 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 Okay. Yes, it is a musical movie, but it says here it came out 2014. So, so probably in Japan, whoa. it came out like later. Nah, I doubt that. All right. Number one, which I'm not surprised about because he tweets about it all the time, is Mad Max Fury Road. That is number one. That is a fantastic movie. The way it was shot is, it's beautiful. Guillermo del Toro did not make that movie because George Miller made that movie. <laughs> uh, and he did a fantastic job on capturing like the essence of the movie and just like the, the, like, the threatening scenes and like everything was just so cool. Um, the first 15 minutes of the movie makes you want to like throw up, make uh, a sandwich, come back and like, I don't know, but it makes you go crazy. So, uh, the next Kojima news we have is something that Cliff Blazinski tweeted out says Kojima wanted to work with Cliff Blazinski on Silent Hill, but he declined. Uh, Cliff Blazinski, obviously the video game designer behind games such as Gears of War, Unreal, Jack the Rabbit, uh, Jack Jazz Rabbit, and a friend of Kojima's, revealed on Twitter that Kojima approached him to help create Silent Hills. Kojima once told me, well, sorry, this is a quote. Kojima once told me he wanted a new Silent Hill with him together out of L.A. I was flattered, but I declined. I don't like L.A. I love new IP, and I would have effed up uh, Silent Hills. End quote. That's what he said. Um, honestly, I would have not done the franchise justice. I'm a shooty guy. <laughs> okay, cool. So, uh, I wonder what Kojima saw in him. Yeah, yeah. That he would want to work with him mm -hmm. on a horror story. I don't know. You know, Kojima's very smart. Maybe he sees things in people, but probably not 
you know, not this one. Cliff Blazinski, um, like he said, he's a shooty guy. So, hmm. you know. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about this? How do you think that would have turned out? <laughs> cover base uh, <laughs> cover Silent base Hills. shooting zombies. With, chains, with chainsaws. <laughs> with cha- just a bloody bath. Yeah. It's yeah. just, it's not, it's not going to be. Wall bouncing. <laughs> like. It's not going to be such a Silent Hill afterwards. No. There's okay. just going to be explosions. Everywhere. Every sp- Pieces of flesh. Everywhere. Everywhere. Although um, Cliff Blazinski is now working on a new game called Lawbreakers. Uh, he has a new studio called uh, Boss Key Studios. Mm-hmm. So he's working on that now. Um, he doesn't have a release date, but that is only coming out on PC uh, for now, so far. He hasn't okay. mentioned anything about consoles. I mean, he has, but he says, you know, it's only coming out on PC so far. Right. Okay. All right. Yep. What about you? What do you got well, for Metal, Metal Gear, Gear news. news? We have to stop doing that. Yep. So, in Metal Gear news, so we've got the Wonderfest 2016. Um, actually, it showcased a lot of its me- Metal Gear merchandise. Uh, we've got action figures, uh, little cute toys, things like that, models. Uh, and then very serious toys from Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty. If I see here, I see... You know, Solid Snake, uh, you've got Venom Snake, uh, because I noticed the scars, uh, you've got Raiden, who even thinks about him anymore, um, you know, and, wow. and, and then you got uh, Sahelanthropus. I actually yeah. said that right the first time. Nice, nice. Yeah, And all it right. looks extremely well done. It looks really well done. Um, they've got the base form in which it's like hunched back. And the face is forward, right. and then they got the standing one with the sword in its hand. The Metal Gear Solid 1 uh, Rex look. Yeah, yeah, it looks like Rex in that one. Uh, but, I mean, these these toys look great, or rather models, because I know some people get offended by that. Uh, I'm also looking at a very serious version of Venom Snake yeah. uh, in Extreme full attire. Detail. Extreme detail, very good. And then I've got Raiden in the ninja suit, all gray. Is that Metal Gear 4 ninja suit? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It is it no? That's no. It's no. revenge. Ra- Ra- oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, so these these are, these all look amazing. You guys should go check it out. Uh, it seems like they're going to be on sale, and of course the quiet model is also there. Uh, oh, look at that! You got Gray Fox. Wow, that looks really good. That looks amazing. Check it out in Metal Gear Informer. Uh, also in Metal Gear News now, Japanese fans can now collect. MGS5 inspired coasters in new Big Boss X Boss campaign. Konami, if you're listening, would you would you mind sending us some uh, coasters from Japan? Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. That'd, be, that'd be awesome. Some here, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We would we would buy drinks even when we're not thirsty, just to put them on our table. On the coaster. On the coaster. Bring it to North America. Do it now. Okay. <laughs> so you guys can collect various coasters. Have various designs. You got one with the Fox unit, the um, XOF unit. So if you're a Japanese listener, you can get these. We know you're out there. We see the statistics. We see the stats. You're <laughs> listening <do>. to us. <laughs> you can send it to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you like to donate to <laughs> if us. If you like to donate, uh, uh, please send us an email. and Send us an email. We will give you an address. <laughs> <laughs> but these coasters look pretty good. Uh, what do you think of your uh, design there? Looks pretty cool. It just, um, I've never been a coaster guy, but it just sucks that it's not coming to North America. I've never been a coaster guy until Metal Gear was on it. <laughs> there you go. There, there you it go. is. You, you know, Xbox wasn't that good until Metal Gear came out on it. Nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> Halo is like. We're not here to talk about Halo. You're right. But you know, the thing about Halo Moving is on. <laughs> in other news. Konami details Cloaked in Silence DLC and also uh, Map Azure Mountain. So, uh, right, from the what we spoke of last week. Yes. Right. So we, we've already given two other details, like on Coral Complex mm-hmm. or um, Rusty, Rust Palace. Rust Palace, yeah. Um, and we've explained how it is. This one is more of an open field. All you have okay. are rocks. Um, and, and there's like, there's even this hill where you can get an, a massive vantage point. You can just see everything. It, it looks great. It's really outdoors. It, it's kind of like, it, you know, it's not like a jungle feel, but yeah, uh, you, there's a lot of places where you can 
where you can run around in very little places where you can hide behind. Um, have you seen? Look, look at that. We, we yeah, looks, got tents. Pretty, pretty um, intense. Yeah, yeah, we got tents and uh, broken down buildings. Uh, I mean, this one was supposed to be modeled after um, the battlefield in which you face quiet. Okay. But they've added like a lot more stuff. Um, I think they took off the river. It looks like a mixture of Africa and Afghanistan. It, it does. It does. Um, it looks great. It looks great, honestly. Uh, these, again, this DLC comes out in March. Still um, no date. Still no date. So, but uh, I don't know if you saw our post on Facebook or on Twitter. It's actually fairly cheap. It's going to be $3.99, Euro dollars, which means if you've heard episode, what what was it, 11? 12. If you heard episode 12, we said $5. We did. So, so we called it. Kana- we, Konami's listening. Yes. Konami's yes. listening to us, guys. It is going to be about $5. Mm-hmm. Um. Or if you're interested in the whole, you know, the appearance pack, the hero packs, st- stuff like that, it'll cost you a little more, but it won't be that much. Yeah. Um, but honest- everything, everything together, which is the Cloaked in Silence DLC pack, yeah, is going to be five dollars, which is a perfect, perfect price point for this. Yeah. Perfect price point. They're really trying to get on our good side here. Yeah, uh, yeah. But- I honestly thought they were gonna go for ten, fifteen dollars. We did say that. Yeah. I-, I thought it was gonna be like fifteen minimum. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I didn't think they would go this slow, and I am so glad that they did. Uh, much props to you, Konami, for deciding to make this move and trying to get on, you know, the good side of yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, of course, Metal Gear Online will introduce Sabotage Mode to this DLC. And so, if you don't know what Sabotage is, it's basically... Well, let me explain it to you like this. There's a there's an attacking team and a defending team, almost like yeah, yeah. you know, um, capture the disc or cloak and dagger, um, except you're not cloaked, uh, at least from what I've read, you're not cloaked, yeah, and your job is to either dismantle the missile or Fulton the missile. Now, of course, if you decide to Fulton it, people can shoot it down, of course. Yeah. But if you decide to dismantle it, it, that'll take a lot longer. So you've you got two teams. One is defending. One is trying to get this. It's kind of like FOB, but live. So how do you feel about this uh, new mode? This is very cool. I'm, I'm they did say that they were going to add uh, more modes and DLC modes and stuff when the game came out. But it's good to see that they're still applying new modes and stuff. I want to see, honestly, this is cool and all, but I want to see like a like a free roam, uh, do whatever you want kind of uh, mode. You know, kind of like Grand Theft Auto, where it's just like a free mode, do whatever you want kind of stuff. That would be pretty cool. You I mean, know, how interact would that with other look players. To you, though? How would that it would how look would... exactly how Grand Theft Auto would look. So let's say 16 player, 32 player max inside of the Metal Gear Solid 5 map, right? So like the Metal Gear Solid 5 map, uh, and you have 16 players inside, and you can do whatever you want. And let's say you have different bases and stuff like that, where it's like your base kind of thing, or your mother base, or whatever. Um, and you could just roam around, you know, hunt animals. Uh, but the catch is you have different players inside of the map. Would they be against each other, or would they be helping each other? Would uh, they be able to- Kill one you know, in, in Grand Theft Auto, it's like everyone's against each other. You can shoot. You can kill if you want. But, uh, yeah, that's just totally up to you. And you can maybe, like, get gear. Like, you shoot them down and you get their gear and stuff. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, multiplayer points. Um, that would be cool. What do you think about that? I, I really don't. I Personally, I can't see it. I can't see it happening. Only because Grand Theft Auto, you can see it happening because it's an actual city. You got people, you got cars, you you know, it's like, it's, yeah. everyone in Metal Gear Solid 5 is your, is military, is your enemy. There's yeah. just like, there's no if, ands, or buts. There's nothing more to go into. There's, it's nothing. It's just, you know, what are you really going to do? Take down a base together? I mean, they've got to make some pretty big, you know, if there was That'd a mode, fun. if there was a specific mode in which the base was like super big. Yeah. And I'm not like, talk, I'm not talking about the airport or anything that the airport was big. Just super big to explore. I, know, I guess I always dreamed of teaming up with someone playing Metal Gear. Uh, imagine doing like some side ops together with someone. You, you need to go back to Peace Walker. Well, yeah. Okay. Aside from like the PlayStation Portable ones, having stuff like 
you know, on the online features now with, with the consoles. There's, there's never been something where you could just team up aside from like team deathmatch, uh, tackling missions and stuff. Uh, Peace Walker has done it, um, uh, and with the consoles like on Xbox 360 and PS3, uh, but I want to see something tackled with with this game. You know, mm-hmm. try let's see maybe let's take down Quiet together or whatever and stuff like that'd be pretty cool. We I guess we'll see what they do in the future. Yeah, this game is still long from being dead. Oh yeah, absolutely. But to move on, so we've got Donna Burke performing Sins of the Father live. Um, I checked it out. She did a good job. She did a very good job. You guys can check it out in Metal Gear Informer. Um, she's just she's doing her thing, and it sounds great. It's awesome. Yeah. Did you? You should. I haven't checked it out. No. You should check it out. Yes. You should check it out. Um, but that's about it for Metal Gear news, guys. Right. These DLCs are coming out soon in March. Are you excited? Let us know on Twitter. Let us know on Facebook. Please email us. You know, what are you looking forward to in these maps in this new DLC? What do you? Are you looking forward to using Quiet? Are you buying this DLC? Yeah. Uh, I think, are, I'm definitely getting it. I think with the price point... I mean, I, I have PS3. Don't know if it's going to come out for that. <laughs> I think it will. I think it will, but if it does, I'll get it, I guess. Um, I, I am excited about it. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, me too. But mostly when I play it, I'm at your house anyway on the Twitch stream. So we'll play it there. We'll debut it whenever it comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We will definitely... Uh, again, you can also follow us on Twitch. We're we're there too. Just every Thursday at nine PM Eastern time. <laughs> nine PM is your time. Um, All right, tips with Arnaldo. When playing online, if you're using the magazine, you know the empty cartridge and the gun as your support weapon. Here's a little tip: when you knock someone down, right? Usually they don't get knocked out in the first hit, but if you knock them down then equip your magazine and toss it right at their head, they get knocked out. Second tip. Do not shoot your teammate when they're in the grasp of the enemy. Killing them will result in you getting three... uh, You're going to have three bounties on your head, and the person who's holding them is still going to get the points, even if you kill them. Finally, if you're worried about a full team cannon at the top of the ladder, here's what you do. While you're on the ladder, have the box equipped. Once you get up to the top, the box will automatically go over you, and you can avoid the full team cannon. Good luck. All right, so you can write it to underthecardboardbox at gmail.com to submit your question for the week. And we've been giving away MGS5 codes for the last five weeks. Uh, It's brought to you by us right now but mm-hmm. this time we got it like we were mentioning before we got in contact with kunami and this uh beta uh this i'm sorry this code is brought to you by kunami yeah uh i just spoke to them and i said hey uh so we've got some listeners and we would really love to just give away some copies of metal gear solid 5 the phantom pain and you know, Heido and I, we didn't know what to expect. We were just like, they're going to laugh at us. Yeah, yeah. They're gonna, I said, but hey, they're following us. So yep. let's just bite the bullet. Yep. They said, sure. And they gave us codes. They gave us codes. So thank you so much, Konami, for yes. your contribution uh, to our show. Um, and it is because of that contribution that we're able to say that today we have two two winners two two winners two uh, which we will announce um something different about this one um this wasn't random uh we just got to say that now um so before this weekend arnaldo and i uh you know we only had one code left before this right we only had one code left and then i told arnaldo i said okay we have to dig in and we have to we have to really thank our fans. There's been two dedicated fans on our Facebook group uh, who has been following us and has been emailing us as well. And they've been actively chatting on the Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. So this is before this weekend. And we said, okay, I'll chip in. You know, we'll both chip in to buy uh, another Metal Gear. 
so that we could uh, have two winners this time. And then Konami just comes out of nowhere and they give us codes. Um, so we had one code left. Now we have many more. And we have two winners. And those two winners are, you guys already know who you are, Steven Snowden and Christopher Gibson. Congratulations, guys. You, you guys know why you guys are winning. You guys, you honestly, like Heidel said, this was not random. We decided um, to choose you guys. That we, we have nothing. We knew this all along. We, <laughs> we have nothing but thanks for yeah. you guys for supporting us when we were so small uh, to this point. We want to give you these codes. And this was even before um, you sent us this intro. Yeah. yeah. To be honest with you. Uh, we, this is from uh, generally from our hearts. You guys can also win the other, you all can all win. Yep. Um, just, uh, you know, follow us on Twitter, uh, on Facebook, you know, and send us an email to under the cardboard box at gmail.com with your discussion idea. If we choose it and that will be random. If we <laughs> choose it, you will win a copy of metal gear solid five, the phantom pain, Courtesy of Konami. That's right. So what was their question? All right. So you can read the first question, which is by Steven. You could answer that We're one. We're actually going to cover two. So for the first time, two questions for our Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain, PC giveaway. Right. Courtesy of Konami. Courtesy of Konami. Question for, all you, for you all. What is your favorite Metal Gear weapon from any game? Can't wait for next week's episode. Who knows when he sent that? <laughs> I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know when he sent that one. He sent that a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> okay, well, there you yeah, go. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, last month, actually. Oh. <laughs> well, why don't you read what, what uh, uh, Christopher said? So, do you want to answer Steven's question first? Oh, I mean, we could, we could go with that. Yeah, sure, okay. Um, My favorite weapon from any Metal Gear game. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Hmm. Huh. Huh. Um. Man, I, I mean, I might seem like a square for saying this one, but I've always enjoyed the USP or the SOCOM, the forty-five, uh, the first weapon you ever get. Um, not because, not just because you know Snake is a fan of it, but. Honestly, because it's like the it's it's the first. I'm not really of a machine gun kind of guy when it comes to the game. Uh, only because I don't I don't play like a free for all, just kill everyone you see, and who cares about alerts and whatever the case. I I I'm more of the tactical, um, take them down silently types. Although killing them is my last resort, I usually stick with the the tranquilizer. Why do I like the uh, the SOCOM or the USP or the 45, as you would say? It's it's only because, you know, when, especially when, when the dog tag days were going on, when you would, like, fire, it, you know, you either hit their leg or um, or fire to the side, you know, it really, it, it scares them. Now, I know you're probably saying, but Arnaldo, you can do that with any gun. Yeah, but you don't get a suppressor for every gun. Yeah, you don't. Um, And, of course, in part three, that changes, but... It was just the first gun that you just get a suppressor for. You can take out anyone from a distance and no one would notice. And it has such stopping power. Like the gun in its, it's supposed to be a 45 caliber weapon. The gun in itself in real life, because they can't use those kind of names in the game for copyright reasons or whatever the case may be. It's a really powerful gun. Yeah, it is. So to have it in the game, you can you can go out through all you don't you don't need any other gun if that's the case. You don't. At least I don't use any other gun. Um, yeah. Unless I'm trying to have like I I just don't care. I'm just going all out. Like in MGS two <laughs> when when you meet up with Snake inside of Arsenal and you're having that little you're 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 fighting with all those soldiers. Um, there I'll use a machine gun. Yeah, yeah. With a sword or whatever. But I guess the forty five would be where I have to go. It just that's a good. that's a great choice. I. I second you on that. I believe that it's an iconic weapon for Metal Gear. Uh, my favorite weapon, though, in Metal Gear Solid is uh, the M9. 
M9 has always been with me. Uh, like you said, I'm more of a tactical approach. I like being silent. I don't really like to kill. So what I do is I just <laughs> tranquilize everyone. Uh, the M9 is, is perfect for what I want. It has a silencer. So I can just go in there and just, you know, take those bad guys out. Uh, the first time you experience the M9 is in, you know, Metal Gear Solid 1. And you have that gun as like, this is your gun. You know, this is this is what you came in with. That's it. You know, so I kind of um, I kind of see it as like whatever I have on me, I'm going to take uh, uh, with me to the end. You know, um, do you mean you mean um, you said MGS one MGS one that you start off with the M9? I think so. Yeah. You start off with the SOCOM? No. What do you start off with? Nothing. You oh right, yes, yeah, right. You find, find it, it on the on whatever in the first place. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because I'm, I'm just, saying, well, I'm saying it in a sense where we're like the first weapon you get, you know, which is the first weapon you get is your hands, right? Technically, right. Well, because the, yeah, yeah. The the only reason it that is is because while he was in Foxhound, that's the rule they have. Weapons and equipment are OSP, a cure on site, mm -hmm. um, because they can't leave like any like mark of their presence. Yeah. So no guns from them, no nothing. Anything you find, that's your weapon. Yeah. Uh, and the M9 was first introduced in Twin Snakes. It was mm -hmm. never in uh, the one for the PlayStation. No. Um, which, now that I think about it, I wonder, how would that have worked with those kind of mechanics and engine? Which yeah. is funny. But yeah, I, I hear you. Um, when they added... It, it was... Now that you mentioned that, when they added the M9 to Metal Gear, the Twin Snakes, that was... <laughs> it was pretty awesome, because it's just like... You never got to do this before. You never got to no. knock people out from a distance. Yeah, yeah. So it's fun. Yeah. And and just, you know, the Zs on top of them, <laughs> circling, and then, like, just the different things you can do, uh, waking them up, hitting them and stuff. Like, it's just fun to me. You know, that beginning scene with uh, when you're getting off the, um, you know, the water and you're coming into that that little, little base mm -hmm. there uh, where you're waiting for the elevator is so fun, you know? Yeah. Like, it's 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 iconic that weapon you know it went on to metal gear 2 and then 3 and all that in different ways and variations of yeah. course you know but uh yeah, it's true. it's such yeah. an iconic weapon i use it all the time in metal gear solid 5 and it's you know the, it's tranquilizer that of it has course. there um and then just going back and seeing how i've played metal gear games i've always played it in a more stealthy tactical way where i don't want to have leave any trace that i was there and just putting everyone to sleep, uh, having them going, you know, like if I'm if I'm inside of a base and stuff and then I, I shoot and then I, I like, let's say I run out of tranquilizer gun, uh, tranquilizer um, suppressor. I'm just like, dang, what do I do now? How can I defeat them? You know, so then I, I, I use my hands and stuff, but I always rely on my M9. Right. It, if you want to if you want to hear something about that. Mm hmm. There's there's a little there's a little um, trick that I that I found out while playing. Mm -hmm. If you guys go back to playing it, you let me know if you used it. So hit the person with a tranquilizer in a non instant knockout area. Their mm -hmm. arm, their foot, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Then take an a lethal weapon and shoot them in both legs. You're gonna see them like do an animation. Like they'll like they'll like fall down and they'll look at you, and then they, or they'll look in a direction and then they'll just fall back. Now, they, regularly, they would die. Yeah. But if you had tranquilized them prior to it, it would say that they're sleeping. <laughs> now, nice. here's the thing. If, if someone comes and wakes them up, they die. Wow. They'll be dead. Either that or if, if the Zs run out, of course, they'll be dead. Yeah. Like you'll just see a, a pool of blood just come out. So do you get the kill? It's a kill. It's a kill. It's a kill. But okay. it's interesting how a, he's asleep. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you'll only, I, I think the kill only counts once they wake, when he wakes up. Right, right. So, that, so if you leave the base then, like that area then. I, I, I don't think you'll get the kill. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Okay. But he's definitely dead. He's like, no matter what. Like yeah, he, yeah, if you, yeah. If you wake yeah. him up, he's So he's dead. like in a sleep coma. Pretty so much. I guess your best bet is just to put him in a locker. Right, right. So that no one could find him. Well, no one can find him and he won't wake up. Right. So he's infinitely Which, asleep. He's just he's just asleep for good. Yeah, he's just, he's gone. Yeah, he's dead. Uh, but all right, yeah, there yeah. are there are other great weapons in Metal Gear. Um, 
you know. What was the, that one from uh, Metal Gear Solid Four? Uh, it's like a the tornado, the tornado gun? gun. Yeah, that one was pretty interesting. There's a lot of cool guns like that that have been over the years. I'm gonna I'm I'm look that up. On yeah, Google. yeah, yeah. Keep look it up. About it. Um, but I remember Metal Gear Solid Four. It took a whole lot to get that gun. Um, but it's it's funny how they just incorporate these guns, like the easy gun. The easy gun was so funny. Uh, it's like the best gun ever. And when you put it, was it on easy or very easy? I can't remember, but it was on very easy. Yeah. So it's like it had a a well, a, a, well a, no a wait, laser sight. It's you you really get it when you when you play snake versus monkeys. Yes, because that's yeah. the gun you use. That's the gun you use. Yeah. Okay, I can't say this name for the life of me. Okay, let me the, try. The Tengash Nigma. <laughs> I can't even say that. The Tanegam Shima. <laughs> the Tanegam Shima. The, the, the Code Conversation. <laughs> anyway, so that is the gun you get. Yeah, what that's about, a great gun. What about the um the, the the gun that runs on sunlight? Oh, yeah. And then yeah, you hear yeah. snake, sunlight! Yeah, sunlight! <laughs> that was good. Yeah. That was good. Um, I like that one. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid 4 had a lot of weird guns. <laughs> yeah, a lot of... Gu- it's, it's their Easter eggs, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, of course. Um, of course. MGS4, sunlight gun. Uh, let's see. It, I guess it's called the solar gun? I think it was a solar gun. Hmm. Sunlight! Sunlight! <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how you reload. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It reminds me of the of the other guns, you know, that you get in other games and stuff like the t- Chicago Typewriter and Resident Evil Four. I oh, think they were of course. trying of to like probably implement stuff like that. Like no, with well, I weapons, mean, if we want know? to talk about no the, the type, you know what the Typewriter from Metal uh, from Metal from Resident Evil Four is, I think it's parallel to the Patriot. Yeah, absolutely. They both it has don't the run same out of they, drum. They both uh, don't magazine. run out of bullets. Yep. Yep. It's like infinite power mm-hmm. and. If the Patriot was more like stable and it had like a silencer, I would love the Patriot. But it was just like a, it's like a beast. It was like a gun, just like whatever, like just kill everything in sight. Yeah, yeah, just go around shooting everybody. Yeah, yeah, for sure, uh, for sure. <laughs> have you ever heard the explanation that Sigit gives you? What when you have the Patriot? Because you know he he usually explains the weapon the you weapons, have equipped yeah, yeah, to uh-huh. the cardboard box, uh-huh. and he was like, <laughs> and it never runs out of weapons. I mean, the, uh, out of ammo. Mm-hmm. And, and Snake says no because the chamber has the uh, infinite symbol or something like that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. It's like it makes no sense whatsoever. But it's just it's just it's amazing how even in these unlocked things, yeah. Um, Konami thought of or Kojima, Kojima mm-hmm, thought mm-hmm. of uh, just an explanation behind All right it. for everything for everything, everything. like yeah, things yeah. that don't even make sense exactly. So um, so we've got the uh, Tekanekameka and the um, <laughs> the solar gun. <laughs> And we've got the Patriot, which were all like special, we- and the Easy Gun. The Easy Gun, yeah. The Easy yeah. Gun, pretty which, funny weapon. Yeah, yeah. Which is literally letter E, letter Z, Z gun. gun. That's it. It's an insult to you because right. it's just like you're playing it on very easy. Yeah, you're 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 just whack. Right. Uh. So the next question we have is from Christopher Gibson. Uh. I saw him uh, writing to you. He was actually the one that was giving you the trivia. Yep. Stuff. It was, yeah, it was yeah. pretty good. Going back to back. <laughs> back to back. So he writes in and he says, hey, guys, Chris here. Starting to feel part of the podcast. I've been, and you definitely are. You are <laughs> part of the podcast. I've you been, are UCBP. I've been meaning to ask another question to get the Phantom Pain code. If I handed my PCMR friend that he had to jump into the fun. So on to my question. Which character in the Metal Gear universe deserves their own game? For me, the mysteries behind Ocelot has always been so enticing. I'd love to watch him struggle morally when he has to choose where the place where to place his loyalties. Behind Volgan, the boss, the CIA, Foxhound, Liquid, Solidus, the Patriots, leading up to running his own take over the world mission. It would be fun to pick up uh, from the Phantom Pain. Other Metal Gear games I'd like to be interested in playing are Metal Gear Solidus, Metal Gear Vamp, Dead Cell, and Metal Gear Jaeger. <laughs> Jaeger. Anyway, keep up the good work, boys. I'll find a way a day to jump onto MGO early sometime soon. We'll definitely see you on every Thursday on Twitch TV forward slash under the cardboard box. 9 p.m. Eastern, Eastern time. Standard time. <laughs> so first off, before we go into that. Okay. I have a bone to pick there as you were reading it. 
<laughs> All right. Do you, can you guess what it is? I have no idea. He called us boys. <laughs> it's because oh my goodness. <laughs> Aren't you? I know you're from Alaska. You told us. Um, you called us boys, man. Come on. It's all right. It's all right. Well, I'll give you that. All right. I mean, I know you're a girl, but I mean, it's all right for how's me. How's that? How's that uh, removal going? It was good, man. You know, so the doctor told me. So yeah. <laughs> back to the question. <laughs> all right. So okay. What do you think? I mean, he definitely beat me to that Ocelot one, but I think a lot of us want that. Yeah. I think oh, yeah. If you're a Metal Gear fan, you want a Metal Gear, uh, a Metal Gear based off of Ocelot and yes. all he did. What did he do during those nine years where, you know, Big Boss, Venom Sink was in a coma? Yeah. What like? What did he yeah. do mm-hmm. before that? What What were the actions? You know what I mean? Like during. Because it was still running. Yeah. Yeah. It was still running it. Yeah. During, you know, how, how did he run this? How did he get together with. With with Kaz, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, and how were they running that? You know, because remember he found out that Kaz was taken. Yep. And all these other ones are good, especially the uh, Jaeger. You know, uh, that would be amazing. Gray Fox, like, that'd be what amazing. Does Gray Fox do. We know a little bit about his history about Gray yep. Fox. You know, he was a child saved by Big Boss, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and he was handed over to you know children's services that can take care of him because he was mentally ill from yeah. what he had gone through. Yeah. And then they turned him into Null. Yeah. Which is they? It, it was, oh, he was already a ninja with like a machete, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and after every one of his missions, they would just reset his memory. So he would just like not know. He would just be a killing machine. Yeah. But because he couldn't defeat Big Boss in um, portable ops, um, that kind of like he couldn't let go of that. He went nuts. You know, Big Boss saved him again. He joins Big Boss and Foxhound. So that that's pretty much what we know. And of course. From Metal Gear One, Metal Gear Two, um, yeah. well, well, Metal Gear One. I'm sorry, Metal Gear One, Metal Gear Solid One, or well, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear One, all the way to Metal Gear Solid One. One, yes. Um, so that we don't know what happened prior to we know what well, we know of. We we read yeah. and heard, yeah. but we but we, like we the in betweens, the yeah, in betweens, yeah. the in betweens would, would be good. Like like when when he when he um confessed about Naomi, yeah, about him yeah. him killing her parents mm-hmm. and adopting her. You know what happened in there? Did he adopt her during the battlefield? Um, because he shared his he he mentioned that he shared his rations with her. Yeah, he did. He did. So uh, that that's a great way to put it. Uh, if there were some someone I see in the Metal Gear universe, you're gonna find this funny. But Fat Man, I think he's so interesting. Like, how the heck? Why is he on rollerblades and why is he drinking wine in the middle of battle? I. I you're asking me? <laughs> like laugh and get fat, dude. Laugh and get fat. Like I want I want to see what the heck happened with this guy. But a uh, storyline I really want to see is uh the stuff between the Cobra unit, you know? The Cobra unit with the boss. No, I was going to say that. Yeah, I know. I was going to say the I boss. Know you were. I know, I know. He did I this know. on purpose. I know. I know. So, the Cobra unit, man, that is such Stop a it. fan. I want a story no, with no, the no, boss. No, no, no. I did it. I did it. I did Stop. it. Stop. Okay. All right, the boss, <laughs> the boss and the Cobra unit, man, like, just imagine all the stuff they've been through. You know, they talk about all these things that they've been through with her and all that, her leading the team. Like, how would that look? She was the hero of World War II. Of World War II, right. Like, imagine a game with the boss and having the Cobra unit as, like, your allies or something. Or you could pick different different ones. Like, let's say, like, yeah. for example, like, Every mission is like the spy, uh, um, uh, spider, you know, whatever, or or the end, or like uh, I mean, sorry, the fear or the okay, end, yeah, was, or um, or the fury or something like that would be so cool. Like before they got like I guess their supernatural powers or or, or whatever. Maybe they just always had it. They could probably have, but probably wasn't as developed as how they had it in Metal Gear Solid Three. You know, just because like, if it would be a, a a a game set in the past, I don't think their 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 uh, their stuff would be that advanced. They probably trained themselves to be like that. Just imagine, um, uh, imagine a game set in the past. They wouldn't have those types. Of, they would be dressed differently. They probably wouldn't be well, able they would to look younger. Sure, they would, of course they would look younger. But I don't think their their powers would be that developed. Can you, can you imagine the mission? Except in, for the fury. Can you imagine the mission in which you have to kill kill the sorrow? Oh yeah, man! It could probably be in that same game, that same game, you know, because she did have. It was the mission in which she had to kill the sorrow. Um, yeah, who is the father of Ocelot? So you know they yep. had relations. Yeah, yeah. 
and yeah. you can you can kind of see uh well from what we can tell she shot him in the eye mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right there in russia where where um where snake landed the virtuous mission yep. began where so as soon as you get thrown off the bridge by the boss you look i think to the left was it I can't remember. I, I, think it was I believe to the it's left. to yeah. the left. You when see you a press skeleton. like the R1 and you look to the left, you see a skeleton and that's the sorrow. Yeah. Yeah. You see the sorrow. So they've been there before. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But yeah, a game based off the boss would, especially with the MGS5 mechanics, like during World War II. Yeah. Yeah. I think would be pretty killer. That's pretty awesome. You know, World War II setting. And you then, know, that's my favorite era. I was going to tell you that, you know, picking your companions. I mean, they do that in MGS5 now. Like, you can kind of suit up. Yeah, yeah. No, of you course. Know. But that's what I'm saying. Choose like, your companion. The, following. The fury. The, the fear, pain. The pain. The, fear. The, the pain would be so cool, man. Like, just launching. Um, <laughs> Wasp or whatever uh, Yeah, was. whatever. And then Tommy gun. <laughs> you know, you're just firing off. Yeah, yeah. Um. Having clones of you. Stop talking. All right. Okay. <laughs> They're going to get you for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's gonna Stop get being mean to Stop Hyrule. Being mean. <laughs> I'm not being mean. I promise. Okay, I'm being mean. <laughs> yeah, I, that would be that would be very cool. Yeah. I think that if they create something like that, that would probably be one of the one of the greatest Metal Gear games. Let's And then also, what we didn't mention, mm-hmm. because... You know, we forget things. The part in which the boss would be training, you know, Snake. snake. Oh, man. man. Yeah. That would be awesome. Like Like when they first meet or like, you know, the story behind that and the training, the training behind it. It would only be flashbacks because Naked Snake didn't really go into battle. No. Till Snake Eater. Yep. So mm-hmm. it'll it'll yeah it'll have to be flashbacks or something. Maybe like during the game, you know, she'll remember something like doing a you know a judo throw with him or the CQC stuff, you know. So yeah, I mean, it could. I could very much see how the beginning of the game could could be. It could be like she's telling Naked Snake about her story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although Naked, I don't think Naked Naked Snake, I don't think knew about the sorrow though. Probably not. No. So I guess that would have to be something omented. Um, like a Titanic. Yeah. Like Titanic, you know how Rose, it was set in the like the, the future. And yeah, she was, she, was an old, she was an elderly lady. Yeah, and she was telling the, um, the people of the ship that were trying to find a Titanic. Um, uh, she was telling them about Jack and stuff. <laughs> about Jack. <laughs> about Jack. <laughs> about Jack. So. Uh, yeah, man. These, these games would also, these, it would interest me a lot. Um, I mean, I would have said Colonel Campbell. Yeah. In a sense, but I, it's like, did his really did his story really begin before he met Big Boss? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was a Green Beret. Yeah. He's a Green Beret. Uh, who know? Who knows how he got to the prison in in Port of Wops? Yeah. You know, you're in a cell because they want to know where the other half of the philosopher's legacy is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what happened? Why'd you defect? All those things, and then you find in the other cell, you see Campbell. Yep. Who was not uh, a colonel at he's the time. He's not. He's not a colonel. He's, he's not. just a soldier for the Green Beret. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then he becomes like your ally. You work next to this guy, which we don't even know what happens to him afterwards. We don't know. We don't know, Fire Truck. <laughs> we have no idea. Back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> uh we don't know what happens to him afterwards. We just don't. We just this is like he's gone. Yeah. Yeah. MGS five, he's gone. He's gone. <laughs> Peace Walker, he's gone. Gone. <laughs> um How about Kaz? Uh yeah, Kaz would be interesting. Ka- I mean Kaz was a soldier, but can is can there be a game about here's the thing. In every metal gear, there's a metal gear. Yeah. There wouldn't be a metal gear in any of any these of games. These. No, yeah. They wouldn't be. Nor would the boss be fighting some big mechanical machine. Right. Nobody would be fighting these. So the, the I guess the question is, I mean, I, I guess they would have to make something else up. Yeah, they would. 
you know, yeah, like, like what to do and what are we doing and here we go and how do we make a story it would connecting to the you know Hideo, uh, Hideo would connect everything together I don't yeah, know how Konami yeah. would do it yeah because they did say they were gonna make more Metal Gear games mm-hmm. I wanna I wanna go into uh, the the kids you know uh, right after Les Enfants Terribles after, obviously after a few years after that um, going into Eli's story and David's story you know like just Going into their story and and seeing their growing childhood up. growing up, you know, a snake with big boss training and stuff like, how was that like? Uh, how fierce was that? Because it does say that you know he was he was unforgiving, you know, it was just like training, 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 training. So I want to see how that was, you know, why after Eli left, you know, with uh, you know spoilers here, but after Metagross Solid Five, you know, what happens after that? Before that, before you even meet him, how the heck did he become this uh, Eli character, uh, Mamba, this, this, uh, this white ni- Mamba, Ningambunko, Ningambunko, whatever, whatever his name is? Yeah, um, you know how did all of that happen? How did he become such a tough kid? Like, yeah, you're slamming this kid all around, and he's still like, and he just gets up. You slam these other people around; they're just down. They're just down. <laughs> yeah, for the count, like well, how? it has to be the jeans, man. It has the, to be those jeans, those jeans, <laughs> those jeans, Please. man. Come on, man. He's not even... He's a scrawny little kid. He's like 14 in the game. 12. 12? Is, oh, yeah. He's 12. Yeah. 12. He's 12. Yeah. 12. He's a little kid. Hasn't even hit puberty yet, as far as I know. Right. Um, Tossed around by Big Boss. Mm-hmm. Venom Snake. And he just keeps getting up. Like, just what? Keeps getting up. How, you got fully trained soldiers... Yeah. ...who are already incompetent. Mm-hmm. And then there's this 12-year-old little kid... Who you just slam and slam and slam and nothing. Yeah. Until he finally gets knocked out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He breaks his arm. Everything. And he keeps getting up. It's like, what the? It's true. What? It's true. Well, thank you guys uh, for submitting your questions. You guys can submit your questions at under the cardboard box at gmail.com. Uh, and we still have more codes to give away for the Phantom Pain. On to the next topic. Segment. Trivia time. All right. So, like we said uh, last week, we were going to go back and forth on the trivia. Last week, I went. Uh, he got it correct. Uh, this week, he's challenging me for the uh, UCBB trivia. So, if you don't know how it works, Arnaldo or I, we will ask a question uh, talking about Metal Gear dialogue. So, it's between two or more people. And he'll give me a dialogue. And I have to figure out who's saying it to who. What game and where? I'm ready. You're ready? Yep. Okay, here we go. I wrote it down. Crackdown 4. You weren't saying the game, were you? No. Okay, cool. No. Go. You I wrote knew, it down, so I'll I, do it again. Yeah. No, don't. Don't. Shut up. Okay, go. Yeah, thank you. So here we go. Excellent. The Regrets Ultimate Adventure 4. You're going to have to find another co-host <laughs> because I can't anymore. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Here we go. Excellent speech, my friend. Gift of the silver tongue. They say it's the mark of a good officer and of a liar. Say it again. Excellent speech, my friend. Gift of the silver tongue. They say it's the mark of a good officer and of a liar. Again, completely lost. Christopher Gibson is just like, are you serious yeah. right now? Yeah, yeah. He's like, come on. Come on, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hmm. Christopher, write into us and just tell us how you felt. <laughs> how you felt. Uh, okay. Just gonna go for random here. Come on. Come on. Come on. Say it again? Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> excellent, excellent speech, my friend. Gift of the silver tongue. They say it's the mark of a good officer and of a liar. Okay. Solidus saying that to write in Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty 
MGS2, also known as Sons of Liberty. Location, location, location. No idea. <laughs> Inside of Manhattan, New York. <laughs> Inside of Manhattan, New York. Yes. Manhattan, New York is the location. Okay. You are incorrect. That's right. <laughs> it is Ocelot mm-hmm. talking to Commander Scott Dolph uh-huh. in the tanker in front of the Metal Gear. Wow. After he gives a That's speech. That's right. Damn it. I, I knew that. I knew that. Well, that is our trivia. Um, let us know how we're doing. Let, uh, let us know if you have any for us. Give us some comments. Give us some uh, compliments. Give us some pointers. Whichever you prefer. Yeah, for sure. So with that being said, we are on Patreon. We just launched our Patreon. Yeah. Uh, please we support us there. The uh, we are currently doing two tiers. So... Uh, we have one that is you get this podcast, the audio podcast, earlier than anyone. You get a day earlier, and our video cast, which is the second tier that we have on Patreon, uh, is getting the podcast, the audio files um, within as well as the video files that we put up on YouTube a day earlier. So you can go to Patreon forward slash Under the Cardboard Box uh, to support us. If you can't, no problem. We come out every Tuesdays are the new episodes and every Fridays are our video episodes. Just write in under the cardboard box on YouTube or any podcast service and you can find us. We are also on Twitch. So if you wanna see us play some Metal Gear, every Thursday we play Metal Gear, uh, whether it's online, uh, we could play some side ops or the story mode, Uh, that's Every Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we really just want to hang out with you guys, yep. the fans. Honestly, that's why we're doing it. So please come in, log in, do all those things. Join us. And if you can't make it because of, because of a certain time, also tell us that so that we can try to adjust. Yeah. Um, we'll continue playing. It's no problem with us. Yeah. Uh, guys, we want to bring you much more content. Yeah. Uh, which is why, as I said in, in the first part of the episode, why we, we opened this Patreon. You know, we we want to be around for a very long time. And Heido and I, again, because we cannot emphasize this enough, want to thank you, the fans. Want to thank you, the haters. Want to thank you, the lovers. Everybody. Everybody. We sincerely appreciate all that you have done for us. Um, but we can't we can't continue without your help. So please spread the news about the Patreon. Join us on Facebook. Join us on Twitter. Send us an email. Um, we are here. Yep, our Twitter is at UCB Podcast, uh, and we are also on Facebook. We have a Facebook page now, which you can like. Uh, there we'll be posting a lot more frequently as under the cardboard box, talking about uh, the different things that are going on. We are also talking about news. Uh, so currently, the news are coming out right there and then. We will yeah. post it up. Um, also, one thing we want to mention is now on YouTube, um, we will be separating our content. Yep. So if if you don't like us rambling on, um, <laughs> we'll just have a specific YouTube video in which we discuss the news. Yep. If you want to get through all of that and just go to the Code of Conversation, we'll have a separate video talking about the coded conversation mm-hmm. so we break down everything topic by topic each and every day uh wednesdays would be our news segments thursdays would be our coded conversation and fridays would be our full the episode entire podcast which we invite you to to subscribe to our channel again yep comment subscribe guys we we really honestly we at this point i'm just saying we really need your help mother base is empty and we got to run this bad boy. So yep. uh, that's all the content. We want to bring you even more than that. But for now, this is what we can offer. Uh, if all goes well in our Patreon and you can let us know what you guys think of it, we'll open up another podcast talking about other games or other things you want to talk about. More streaming. Um, 
because honestly, what what the Patreon is for is for us to either get new equipment or to be able to bring to you all this other content. Um, you know, we were talking about getting other mics, um, even possibly uh, me getting a new gen console just so that I can continue to play for you guys and spend more time with you guys because otherwise I would have to go over to Heidel's and play it there and, you know, we can't do that every day. You know, we have our own individual um, things to do. We have things we have to accomplish. So please, guys, uh, support us. Let us know what you think of us. Um, and with that being said... That's all I got. Okay. So if Idol has nothing more to say, we are UCBP. You guys are the greatest. We love every one of you. Thank you, guys. And we are signing in. Put down the music, guys. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, ben, Ben, my name is not John. I'm Robert. All right. Robert. Okay. Mr. Robert. Okay. Your name is Robert, right? And That's your correct. business name would be BV Corporation Limited, right? Wait, what? BV Corporation Limited. Is this right? That's, if that's my business? Your legal business name. What is your legal business name? My legal business name? It's, yes. It's called Proof Sound Studios. All right, Soundproof Studio. Okay. No, no. <laughs> Why do you you keep getting it wrong? It's Proof Sound Studios. Proof Sound Studio, right? Yes. Who am I talking? Is this and, Ben? Okay. And how long do you are running the business at this point of time? I've been in this business for about ten years. 10 years, okay. Uh, okay, and 10 years. All right. So, Mr. Robert, your address would be 684 Walk Street, Minnesota, Wyoming. And what is your zip code? My zip code is 11... Wait, wait, hold on. Kids! What What did I say? Put down... that. That's mommy's toy. That's mommy's toy. I'm sorry, they got into the drawer. They found the condoms and everything. You got kids? Ben? Yes. Not have, ben, um, is this Mark, Ben? Your zip code would be your zip code would be? My zip code? One, yeah, one. it's um yes. it's it's ten five. Ten five, right? One yeah. one ten five, right? No, no, just ten All five. Right. Ten five. Can you hold on one second? Okay. This is why we got a divorce. This is why we got a divorce. You see, you stupid kids. I'm gonna put you outside with the bear again. I hate you. I'm on the phone. You want to bleed again? I'm talking with Ben. The only person I've been able to talk to in 10 years. I'm sorry, Ben. Go ahead, Ben. Yo, Ben, do you, you drink sometimes? You go to a bar? Where, where are you calling yeah, from, I'm by the way? Robert. Where are you calling from? Where are you calling from? I'm calling you from Quick Business Funding. No, no, I mean, I mean, I mean, like, what part of the world? Actually, I'm just a qualifying officer. My name is Mark Collis, 
and I'm calling you from Big Business Funding. I understand you that, but where is biz, biz, where is Big Business Funding? Where is this? We are, we are, we are located in California. In California? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Get out. And you can you told me your zip code would be one 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 zero five, right? It's one one ten five, correct? Yeah, yeah, that that that's it. That's it. Go ahead. All right. So, Mr. Robert, congratulations! You are perfectly qualified for this program. I have the senior manager. His name is Ben. You're the he's senior the manager. Expert to tell about the yeah. He's wow. The best loan expert to tell about the like what kind of loan we are offering you. Just talk to him, okay? Yeah, great. That sounds okay. fantastic. Yeah, Robert. Yes, who's this? Uh, yeah, Robert. This is Ben. Okay, I'm the account manager over here. Are you another Ben? No, Robert. This is the second Ben I've talked. How many Bens are over there? Robert, are you interested uh, for the loan? I am. I'm more interested in how many Bens there are, though. See, that's a side issue. The main important thing is that your business is pre-qualified for a loan. If okay. If you are interested for a loan. So I guess after after like, after we talk about the loan, can we talk about why there's so many bends? No. 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 I, th- I thought you would. Give me one second. Give me one second. The kids are be. Get the horse out of the house. Why is there a horse in the house? How many times do I have to tell you this? Why is the chicken on the horse? Damn it! I'm gonna hang you like I did your sister. Hello, Ben. Yeah, hello. Yeah, Ben, you got kids? Hello? Yes, Ben? Yeah, this is Ben. You sound completely different. Okay, what's what's up? Hello? Hey, Ben. Ben! Hey, Ben, you still there? Come on, man. He hung up. up. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, isn't that crazy? (laughs) That has to be Jesus. That has to be, guys. Let's have a little fun. Oh, my gosh. That was... (laughs) That's amazing. I told you, it happens to me all the time. Yo, son. That's crazy. And that's our show.